American 11 trying to call? Buddy, we have some claims. Just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We are turning to the airport. And uh, who's trying to call me here? American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any move, you'll danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. They're not... Oh, the hijackers are in the cockpit. Oh, oh no. Today, we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. There is a report of black smoke in the, in the last position I gave you. From the airplane or from the ground? Uh, they're speculating it's from the aircraft. I saw the, build, I saw the, the plane exactly going into the building. I was standing right there. Three. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, 6 a.m., New York City. The Big Apple wakes to a beautiful, calm, sunny day. Birds sing as citizens go about their daily lives, unaware of the impending chaos. Boston. First on scene, the Algandi brothers arrive at Logan International Airport by taxi and proceed to Terminal C. Traveling from Portland, Maine, Mohammed Atta and Abdulaziz Al Omari arrive at Logan International Airport in Boston. Three more hijackers arrive by rental car and proceed to the terminal. At Terminal C, a different part of the airport, hijacker pilot Marwan al Shayi checks in. Atta receives a call from Marwan al Shayi from a payphone within Logan Airport. al Shayi confirms the coordinated plans of attack are set in motion. Upon check-in and security, some of the hijackers, including the ringleader Atta, was singled out by the computer-assisted passenger pre-screening system. At the time, the system only selected candidates for enhanced baggage scrutiny. Those who had no checked bags remained unimpeded. Prior to the attacks on 9-11, airport policy allowed utility knives of up to four inches on board. Despite setting off alarms and being searched more thoroughly, hijackers successfully made it through security, armed with box cutters and knives. Gate C-19. Within the next five minutes, al Shahi and his terrorist cell boards American Airlines Flight 175, taking their seats in the first and business class areas. Gate B-32. 
Atta boards American Airlines Flight 11, headed for Los Angeles. Seven forty a.m. All five men of the jihadi cell are on board Flight 11, scheduled to depart in the next five minutes. Behind schedule, the plane begins its journey, pushing back from gate B-32. Flight 11, a Boeing 767 holding 92 souls on board, takes off down the runway. Meanwhile, at gate C-19, the fully fueled Flight 175 that's scheduled to depart in one minute is delayed and doesn't receive clearance to take off for 15 minutes. Flight 11. Boston Air Traffic Control Center instructs the pilots to climb to 35,000 feet, but receives no reply. Boston Center, good morning, American 11 with you, passing through 190, 230. American 11, turn 20 degrees, right? 20 right, American 11. American 11, no climbing table level 350. A second attempt to contact the pilots fails. American 11, Boston. Several attempts later, the response remains silent. This is Boston. I turned American 20 left and I was going to climb. He will not respond to me now. Looks at all. like he's turning right. Yeah, I turned him 20 right. Oh, OK. And he's only going to, uh, I think, 29. American 11, Boston. Two hijackers rise from row two each stabbing a flight attendant in the process. Panic and confusion ensues throughout the aircraft. A painful mist permeates as hijackers begin spraying mace throughout the cabin. Two hijackers rise from row two, each stabbing a flight attendant in the process. Panic and confusion ensues throughout the aircraft. A painful mist permeates as hijackers begin spraying mace throughout the cabin. To this day, there is no definitive answer to how the hijackers gained access to the cockpits. Whether through threat or force, terrorists gained control of the aircraft. Flight 175, carrying 65 souls on board, lifts off from the Boston runway, nearly 15 minutes behind the scheduled departure time. Via an airphone, one flight attendant, Betty Ong, notifies an American Airlines Reservation Center of the suspected hijacking. Um, the cockpit's not answering, but I'm and um, I think there's mates that we can't breathe. I, I don't know. I think we're getting hijacked. We're we just left Boston. We're up in the air. I know. We're supposed to go to L.A. and the cockpit's not answering their phone. Okay, but what seat point. are you sitting in? What's the number of your seat? Okay, I'm in my jump seat right now. Okay. At three R. Okay, you're the flight attendant. I'm sorry. Did you say you're the flight attendant? Hello? Yes, yeah, hello? What is, what is your Hi, name? Are you, you're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you. Sure. What is your name? Okay, my name is Betty Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. Okay. Can you describe the person that you said someone is what in business class? Um, I'm, I'm sitting in the back. Somebody's coming back from business. If you can hold on for one second, they're coming back. Our, our number one is got staff. Uh, our cursor is stabbed. Um, nobody knows who stabbed who, and we, we can't even get up to business class right now because nobody can breathe. And we can't get up to the cockpit, but the door won't open. Hello? Yeah, I'm taking it down all the information. We're also, um, you know, of course, recording this. Um, 
At this point, this is operations. What flight number are we talking about? Flight 12. Flight 12. Okay, I'm no, getting... we're on flight 11 right now. This is flight 11. It's flight 11. I'm sorry, Nidhi. Have you guys called anyone else? No. Uh, somebody's calling medical, and we can't get a stop. <laughs> American Airlines emergency line, please state your emergency. Hey, this is Nitty American Airlines calling. I am monitoring a call in which flight 11, the flight attendant is advising our reps that the pilot, everyone's been stabbed. Flight 11? Yep. They can't get into the cockpit is what I'm hearing. Okay, I'm still on with security, okay, Betty? You're doing a great job. Just, just stay calm, okay? It seems like the passengers in the coach might not be aware of what's going on right now. These two passengers were from first class. Okay, hold on. Hey, Betty, do you know any information as far as the gentlemen that are in the cockpit with the pilot who they from first class? They were sitting in 2A and B. Okay. They are in the cockpit with the pilot. Please help them. Is there a doctor on board? Is there a doctor on board, Betty, that's mm -hmm. you guys? You don't have any doctors on board. The transponder signal for Flight 11 is turned off. Despite their limited knowledge, Boston controllers continue to track the plane's movements on primary radar. What's going on on your end, Craig? Uh, we contacted air traffic control. They are going to handle this as a confirmed hijacking. So they're moving all the traffic out of this aircraft's way. Okay. Uh, he turned his transponder off, so we don't have a definitive altitude for him. Uh, we're just going by, they, they seem to think that they have him on a primary radar, they seem to think that he is descending. Okay. Believed to have been a mistake, Atta, the pilot and leader of the attack using American Airlines Flight 11, broadcasts a message over the airwaves, believed to have only been intended for the cabins. Air traffic control listens in. Is that American 11 trying to call? Buddy, we have some planes. Just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We are turning to the airport. 15 Southwest, Bono going to Hampton. And uh, who's trying to call me here? American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you will endanger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Yeah, we got him on primary. 838? Yes. Have you guys heard anything from American? No. Okay, we think there might be somebody in the cockpit right now taking it over. Okay. Yeah, we, we just, it was just uh, broadcast over here. Place. Yeah, we're already doing it. Okay, I don't. Word of the news within Flight 11 spread from control center to control center. Unaware of the impending gravity of the situation, the North American Aerospace Defense Command the military body responsible for the protection of all American airspace remains uninformed of the developing crisis. Go ahead, 38. Yeah, American 11, uh, we suspect there's someone in the cockpit that's taken over. We have just put him in direct Watertown, Jamestown. Last we knew, he was on present heading, cleared to flight level 290. No one is talking to him. Eric has been called. We broadcasted on guard. We tried through company. Okay. Thanks. And 290 is not verified. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, we've taken the American back because he appears to have turned. Yep, thanks. Good. Yeah, I need you to look west of Albany, American 11, and put him on your scope. He is, uh, Nordo has been since he talked to Boston High. We assume he's at flight level 290. Uh, we're not sure. We think there's someone in the cockpit with him. Um, we broadcasted over guard. We've gone Eric. We have gone company, uh, nobody is talking to him, we don't know where he's going, we don't know what altitude he's at. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Flight 11 changes course drastically, making a 100 degree turn southwards, tracing the Hudson River towards the Big Apple. <music> 8.30 a.m. 
Neighboring air traffic control centers are alerted to the hijacked plane. Okay, we just lost um, connection. Lost the connection. Yeah. <laughs> Something's wrong with the airplane? Yeah. In other words, something's wrong. Is, they're not in the cockpit. No, they're Okay, they're in the back of the plane. Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. They're not. Oh, the hijackers are in the cockpit. Oh, oh no. Okay, they're in the cockpit. Hey, Craig. Craig. They're saying the high, they're in the cockpit. Meanwhile, on flight 175, the pilots, oblivious to their own danger, reach cruising altitude of 31,000 feet. The final message transmits from the cockpit of flight 11. Nobody move, please. We're going back to the airport. Don't try to make any stupid moves. Word of the hijacking is sent to Otis Air National Guard Base and was subsequently advised to notify the northeast sector of NORAD. Two F-15 fighter pilots begin suiting up, waiting for orders. Pilots in Flight 175 confirm they can see the hijacked aircraft 10 miles to its south. Okay, United 175, you have them at 12 o'clock now in five, 10 miles. Uh, affirmative. We have him. Uh, he looks about 20, uh, yeah, about 29, 28,000. Okay, thank you. Thirty seconds later, at 29,000 feet, Flight 11 takes a severe nosedive at a descent of 32,000 feet per minute. A Boston controller contacts the Northeast Air Defense Sector and requests military intervention. Roger's weapon, Sergeant Powell. All right, Boston Center, TMU. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New, New York, and we need you guys to, we need someone to scramble some F-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. OK, hey, uh, hold on one second, OK? What? Oh. What was that? Not real world. <laughs> uh, is there any military assistance requested? Uh, yes, we're actually trying to get uh, F-15. Is he inbound to JFK? We, we don't know. <laughs> you don't know where he is at all? He's being hijacked. The pilot's having a hard time talking to the... I mean, we don't know. We don't know where he's going. So I'm just giving you a heads up. We're not talking to him. No one's talked to him about the last 20 minutes. And what's the call sign? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you when he gets to go to your boundary, okay? Okay. Somebody. Twenty-two minutes on from Betty's initial call for help, fighter pilots proceed to battle stations. Placing Panta four five four six on battle stations. I repeat, battle stations. New York Control Center calls for more information on Flight 11 from other aircraft. Flight 175 responds, raising the events of the initial suspicious radio transmissions sent out by Flight 11. Yeah, 175, go ahead. Uh, we figured we'd wait to go to your center. Uh, we heard a suspicious transmission uh, on our departure out of Boston uh, with someone, uh, uh, someone see the mic and said, uh, Everyone uh, stay in your seat. Oh, okay. I'll pass it along over here. Hey, Kingston 93 line, go ahead. The United 175 just came on my frequency, and he said that they heard a suspicious uh, transmission when they were leaving Boston. Oh, yeah? Uh, everybody stay in their seat. That's what they heard is a suspicious transmission. The correspondence marks the last moment contact was ever made with the cockpit of Flight 175. Yeah, 175, recycle your transponder and score code to 1470. United 175, New York. United 175, do you read New York? Elder 1489, do you read New York? Elder 1489, go ahead. Okay, just wanted to make sure you read New York. United, United 175, do you read New York? Moments later, 
Unbeknownst to the air traffic controllers who had just had contact, chaos ensued. Hijackers force passengers and crew to the rear of the aircraft, while two enter the cockpit and murder the pilots. Hello. Do you um, see that United 175 anywhere? And do me a favor, you see that target there, the 3321 code at 335 climbing? Don't know who he is. But you got the US Air 583. If you need to descend them down, you can. Nobody, we, we have a hijack. We have some problems over here right now. Oh, you do? Yes. And okay. that, that may be real traffic. Nobody knows. I can't get a hold of the United 175 at all right now. And I don't know where he went to. All right. Okay, I'll see if I have one. All right. Okay. United 175, New York. This is the ACI watch. Say again, if you lost uh, track of the aircraft, over. Boston has lost track. And on our frequency, we have confirmed that it was a hijack. Yes. On the tapes. Yeah, New York confirms we've lost the track as well, and we were uh, got a report of an ELT in the area that the track was in. Kennedy Tower reports. Are you serious? Kennedy Tower reports that there was a fire at the World Trade Center. And that's, uh, that's the area where we lost the airplane. Squad 18. It's the first battalion trio unit that it looked like it was intentional. It's four, it's four more units going into the box. It could be a terrorist attack. Central, all units be advised. Engine 1 out, World Trade Center, 1060. Send every available ambulance, everything you got, to the World Trade Center now. Go. Roll every available ambulance you got to this position. That's cool, okay. Flight 11 makes contact with the north face of the North Tower at upwards of 460 miles per hour. The plane tears a hole into the side of the World Trade Center Tower between floors 93 and 99. No souls on board survive. The aircraft reaches the core of the building, severing the three staircases in the process, blocking every route to safety for those at and above the impact point. The impassable stairwells seal off the exit for 1,344 people. 90,000 liters of jet fuel ignites, enough to take the jetliner to Los Angeles. The inferno, coupled with all the combustible material from the offices, begins to spread. The damaged elevator shafts send the burning jet fuel through the building, as far down as the lobby. Four seconds after impact, the two fighter jets intended to intercept the already crashed jetliner receive the order to scramble, unaware they are too late. Within the next hour and 40 minutes, between 100 and 200 people are driven to jump from the billowing towers. Hi, sir. Okay, what, what we're doing, we're trying to locate this guy. We can't find him via IFF. What we're going to do, we're going to hit up every track within a 25-mile radius of the Z point that we put on the scope. 29,000 heading 190. We're just going to do, we're going to try to find this guy. They can't find him. There's not, and there's been supposedly there's threats in the cockpit. So we're just, uh, we're doing the thing. Right. We'll work with them. Make sure weapons work with them now. Okay. Flight 175's transponder, which had been turned off completely on Flight 11, changes code twice in a minute. The erratic change is the first piece of evidence that something has gone wrong on Flight 175. 
it remains unnoticed. News stations cut into advertisements to deliver the shocking developments. Images of the crash begin to beam around the world. Crash? Jim, just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. I just saw flames inside. You can see the smoke uh, coming out of the, uh, of the tower. We have no idea what it was. It was a tremendous boom just a few moments ago. You can hear around me emergency vehicles. The controller realizes Flight 175 has deviated off its assigned course, changing altitude, pushing the jetliner on a collision course with other aircraft. Attempts by the controller at New York's FAA Center to contact the pilot are unsuccessful. Okay, 175, do you read New York? Tell the 2433, can you climb to flight level 330? The traffic looks like he's descended back down to 31 now. Yeah, we can go up. Okay, climb and maintain flight level 330, Delta 2433. Climb at 33, Delta 2433. Unaware that Flight 11 has crashed, but still looking for the aircraft, two airborne military F-15s close in on New York. United Airlines office learns of the hijacking of Flight 175. Phone calls to loved ones and a call from a flight attendant exposes the gravity of the situation. Both pilots are dead. One flight attendant is stabbed and the plane is under the hijacker's control. Tons of people in the streets. There's, there are papers, things fluttering out. Uh, I can't see any evidence of what it was that could have crashed. Uh, all I can see is just this massive gaping hole with tons of black smoke going out, falling out of the building. Owen, we yeah. we we have a satellite picture right, right now. There. That is that is it. Oh. Oblivious to the impending danger, a PA announcement throughout the South Tower tells workers to return to their desks. Florida. President Bush arrives at an elementary school in a visit to promote his educational agenda and prepares to read to the class, the pet goat. Flight 175 soars over New Jersey at 28,000 feet. For the next five minutes, the plane is put into a near nosedive, descending more than 24,000 feet. Flight 175 makes its final maneuver, lining up towards Lower Manhattan. Aviation authorities in Virginia and New York descend into disarray as the gravity of the situation falls into view. Check with you now, do you know if anyone down there has done any coordination to scramble uh, fighter type airplanes? Do you think the airplanes in there? No, we have several situations going on here. It's uh, escalating big, big time. And we need to get the military involved with us. Wow, what's going on? Just get me somebody who has the authority to get military in here now. All right, I'll go tell them. Hey, Joe, you see 3321 code just southwest of Newark by about 15, 18, 20 miles, 15,000 descending. I'm looking, hold on, southwest of Newark by about 15, 20. Don't see any. They were tracking him, made a hard left turn, he descended pretty rapidly, and especially what just happened in there. I got somebody who keeps coasting, but it looks like he's going into one of the small airports down there. Wait a second, no, this guy's a big boy. 
you guys a big boy because he's leaving some big contrails. I'm trying to bring him up here and get you. There he is right there. Hold on. I'm just out of 9,500, 9,000 now. Do you know who he is? We just, we just, we don't know who he is. We're just picking him up now. All right, heads up, man. It looks like another one. All right. In. Orders to evacuate both towers is initiated. Less than a minute later, Flight 175 transforms into a ball of flame as it makes contact with the south face of the South Tower. Another one just hit the building. Wow. Wow, that one just hit it hard. Another one just hit the world face. The whole building just uh, came apart. Oh Holy smokes. All right, I guess you guys can be okay. busy. Traveling at roughly 590 miles per hour, the plane crashes between floors 77 and 85. No souls on board survive the impact. An unknown number, believed to be in the hundreds, decease inside the building. Debris from the jetliner, including one of the engines, fell as far as six blocks away. I think an airplane just plowed into the city. I, they did. Uh, uh, the World Trade Center hit the top. No, of the another one. We just saw another one do it. Another one? Yeah. Holy cow! That's two. And, uh, one just hit a little big. Yeah, one just a moment ago. No shit. Viewers tuning in for updates on the North Tower, watch in horror as live pictures of the second crash are broadcast around the globe. What had once seemed plausible as a freak accident suddenly became an act of aggression. Major news networks begin to speculate if America was in the midst of a terror attack. Vantage point from Hoboken that uh, as you look at uh, the picture from our chopper now arriving at the scene, uh, Jim Friedel in Hoboken uh, said it appeared to bank sharply and mm. smash directly, perhaps purposefully, into, oh, oh my goodness, oh, God. there's another <clears throat> one. Oh. oh my goodness, there's another this one. This seems to be on purpose. Oh my goodness, now you, clean? now it's obvious. Seconds after the second plane crashes, NORAD is made aware of the hijacking. There's another aircraft. The second one just hit the Trade Center. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get to. We gotta alert the military uh, uh, real quick on this. Uh. Tommy, we're gonna stop everybody. We're gonna shut. We're gonna shut Boston down. I suggest the same elsewhere. You're gonna do what, Terry? We're shutting the airplanes down. We're not letting anyone go right now. Okay. That's a good move. Uh, we're waiting to hear from security. As, uh, Tommy, Jerry, it's confirmed on that tape that they said we have planes. President Bush is interrupted and makes the decision to continue the class, having learnt of the attack on America. Thank you all. You can step out through where we came in. New York continues its immediate lockdown, closing down all bridges and tunnels into Manhattan.
Attention at NORAD focuses on two more possible hijackings in progress. American Airlines Flight 77 and United Airlines Flight 93. American 77, Indy. American 77, Indy. American 77, American Indy. American 77, American Indy radio check. How do you read? This is Henderson. Still haven't got American 77. Uh, last he was at 35 going to Falmouth, so I don't know where he is out there anywhere yet. So I'm still trying to get a hold of him. We contact the company. All civilian aircraft in the United States are banned from takeoff. FAA orders a national ground stop. 9.28 a.m. Flight 93 makes a mayday call. The cries made by Leroy Homer brought the scope of the attack into view. More targets remained. Florida. Unaware of the continuing threat, the president makes his first statement on the attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. Flight controllers in Cleveland overhear recordings relayed from Flight 93. Calling Cleveland Center, you're unreadable. Say again slowly. You got United 93. United 93. Stop the shard now. Yeah. Descended. What's okay. that? I just saying it looked like he descended there. I don't there. think so. United 93, verify 350. United 93, Cleveland. Go ahead, Frank. Do you have United 93 south the shard? We hear some funny noises. We're trying to get him. Do you okay. have him? No. Thank you. United 93, Cleveland. United 1523, did you hear your company? Uh, did you hear uh, some interference on the frequency here uh, a couple of minutes ago, screaming? Yes, I did, 797, and uh, I, we couldn't tell what it was either. Okay. United 93, Cleveland, if you hear the center, right then. American uh, 1060, a ditto on the uh, other uh, transmission. American 1060, you heard that also? Yes, sir, twice. Roger. We heard that also, thanks. I just wanted to confirm it wasn't some interference. Shortly after the first plane struck the tower, signals emerged that an emergency on Flight 77 was underway. Flight 77 deviates off its assigned course and switches off its transponder. The plane goes dark. Not even the primary radar systems pick up the aircraft. Dissimilar to the other hijackings, no reports of threats or deaths are made. Hijacked over an area of poor radar coverage, attempts to contact the plane are unsuccessful. What are you trying to get a hold? American 77. Okay. We were talking to him and all of a sudden it's just, uh, okay. So we have, we don't know, really know where his target is and we can't get a hold of him. Um, you guys tried him and no response? No response. Lost radar, lost. Yeah, we have no radar contact and, uh, no communications with him. So if you guys could try him again. We're doing it. All right, thanks a lot. We're doing it, thank you. The limited contact left some controllers to believe the plane had already crashed. 
unnoticed by controllers, Flight 77 changes course, flying undetected toward the nation's capital. Hello, Command Center. Yes, sir. This is John Thomas, Ops Manager. I think we need to let everybody know this right away if they don't already. American 77 was over, uh, was just west of Charleston, West Virginia, at flightable 350. It's a heavy, heavy Boeing 752 and disappeared off our radar scope about 1256Z along with lost uh, frequency. We were treating it as the law started to do some procedures to notify search and rescue and whatnot when uh, American Airlines told us they've had some aircraft or an aircraft hijacked. We now believe that aircraft may have been hijacked, although no one has, you know, we have nothing to verify that. What with the World Trade Center, we could have another loose aircraft out there somewhere. Of course, we don't, wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up a primary there anyway. Okay. But again, remember, nothing has been confirmed as far as which aircraft have hit the World Trade Center, but the other one we have is information headed towards Washington. Okay. Let me tell you this. I, I, we were looking. We're also lost American 77. Okay. 77. American Where was he proposed to head, sir? Excuse me? Where was he proposed to head, sir? Okay. He was going to L.A. also. He was also going to L.A. Now, uh, somewhere, sir. Uh, I think he was from Boston also. Boston now, LA. now, let me tell you this, this story here. Uh, in the Indianapolis Center was working this guy. What guy? American 77. Okay. At flight level 350. However, they lost radar with him. They lost contact with him. They lost everything, and they don't have any idea where he is or what happened. Radar picks up an unidentified target tracking it eastward at immense speed. Unaware of the intended target, the Secret Service orders the immediate evacuation of the Vice President from the White House. Flight 77 makes its final maneuver, turning 330 degrees in a spiral turn. Descending at 530 miles per hour, the plane hits several lampposts before colliding with the Pentagon. The impact shoots a fireball that rises 200 feet above the building. In addition to the 64 lives on board, 125 lives are lost inside the building. Rescue efforts for survivors begins immediately. Standing as a metaphor for the disasters, flames engulf the Office of Military Might. Washington, this is Gopher 06. Gopher 06, guy. Yes, sir, that aircraft is down. He's in our 12 o'clock position. Uh, looks like it's just to the uh, north west of the airfield at this time, sir. Oh. Gopher 86, thank you. Descend and maintain 2000. Okay, we're down to 2000. And uh, this is Gopher 06. It looks like that aircraft crashed into the Pentagon, sir. Go for 86. Go for 06. Thank you. News bulletins report of a fire at the Pentagon. In the dark of its actual cause. We must say now that we are a nation under siege. Right now, we are a nation under siege. There is a terrorist attack, as you can see, at the heart of the financial capital of the world. And now, one at the heart of the military command center of the United States of America, the Pentagon. Apparently, there has been an explosion. We have no further details. We don't know the extent of that, but we do have word that there's been an explosion at the Pentagon as and well. And there, there are some uh, smoke uh, clouds um, that we can see uh, in, in, that is the Washington, D.C. area. With three targets hit, focus hones in on Flight 93, the last known hijacked plane airborne. In the space of two minutes, the White House, Capitol Building, and the entire United States airspace is shut down. The first ever unplanned suspension of all flights over American airspace. Operation Yellow Ribbon, aided by Canada, commences. The orders divert all civilian aircraft away from any potential target as fast as possible, grounding planes over the border in Canadian territory. 
In a further display of agency failings, the FAA headquarters decides not to request military assistance for Flight 93. National security agents overhear a conversation initiated by a known associate of Osama bin Laden, the number one suspect, stating that one more target was still to be hit. That target, unbeknownst to them, was the Capitol or the White House. Having heard the fate of the other aircraft, passengers on board plan a counterattack. In an act of immense bravery, passengers on Flight 93 begin a revolt and attempt to enter the cockpit. Meanwhile, as the struggle on Flight 93 was underway, 57 minutes of burning jet fuel had weakened the steel framework of the 1,362-foot tower. Columns within the structure, unable to hold the weight, buckle and bend. sending 110 floors into freefall. The tower submerges into a thick haze, sucking all saturation from New York City life. Pilots observe Flight 93 wave its wings. The hijackers attempt to end the counterattack. Flying over Somerset County, Pennsylvania, hijackers send the plane into a 583 mile per hour nosedive. There is a report of black smoke in the, in the last position I gave you. From the airplane or from the ground? Uh, they're speculating it's from the aircraft. Taking the lives of all 40 souls on board. Uh, who it, it hit the ground. Okay. That's, what they're, that's what they're speculating. It's speculation only. Due to the brave reactions of patriots, the flight never reaches its intended target. Using speed and trajectory projections, the command center predicts the aircraft should be over Washington. Unable to observe the plane, officials conclude the plane is down. The region commander has declared that we can shoot down aircraft that do not respond to our direction. Copy that. I also want to give you a head heads up, Washington. Go ahead. United 9-3, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? Because we he, have confirmation. He, he, he did not land. Oh, he's down? Yeah, down? somewhere up northeast of Camp David. Northeast of Camp David. That's the, that's the last report. They don't know exactly where. Man, it only took him an hour, right? It's about 10, 15, right? It took an hour to level the son of a bitch. I think it happened at 8.50. Yeah, what time is it now? 10.20? Shocked onlookers gaze at the inevitable. On fire since first impact, over one hour and 40 minutes ago, the North Tower begins to crumble and collapse. The tallest building in the world at the time, the North Tower stood at 1,368 feet. The Twin Towers, an imposing icon on the New York skyline, is reduced to rubble. Get out of the street! Boom! Get out of the street! street. <laughs> A 
Over a third of the 1,000 emergency rescuers that put their lives on the line, running into the unknown, perished. The catastrophe claimed the lives of 2,753 victims. Many more lives will be taken in the aftermath. Long-term health complications and cancer diagnoses claimed the lives of thousands of first responders. Those in and around the World Trade Center breathe in the toxic fumes and dust produced when 24,000 gallons of jet fuel ignited, with hundreds of thousands of gallons of heating oils and diesel within the building. Barksdale Air Force Base. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Force Protection Condition Delta is activated, placing all worldwide U.S. military personnel on high alert. Federal intelligence experts begin to suspect who the perpetrators of the heinous attacks were. All trails point to one man, Osama bin Laden. Rescue efforts continue at Ground Zero. Recovery teams rescue 20 people from the pile. The final survivor won't be pulled from the rubble until midday, September 12th. Good evening. Today, our fellow the White House. Our way of life. The president addresses the nation. In a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you, good night, and God bless America. <laughs>